All right, hello, my name is Dio. I'm gonna be showing you how to create the tournament client and open it and run it. The first step is to copy and paste an existing osu.exe into a new folder wherever you want it. Uh, I have my folder created here on my desktop. Step number two is to run that new copy and pasted instance of osu.exe. This is a very basic process. It is not going to take you a long time. Welcome to us. Click the circles. Once you have opened osu, log in. And remember to click remember password. From here, you should have a list of settings that you will want to follow, given to you by your tournament host. If you are a tournament host, I would recommend the following settings. Turn all this shit off. Make sure that snow is off in the menu theme. Seasonal backgrounds, either never or always. It does not really matter which one you choose. I think having them on sometimes is weird. Uh, but either never or always is fine. Click. Keeping all of this the same is fine. I like to show key overlays. It's a very optional thing. Those do show up on the actual client. Nothing about the skin matters except for cursor size and automatic cursor size, which I do prefer to leave on. And from there, everything else is automatically determined. So all of our options are set for the tournament client. We can go ahead and close out. The next thing that we are going to do is create our tournament.cfg file. I'm going to include a pre-made tournament.cfg file in the description of this video. Uh, the one that is given to you on the website uh, and the initial setup page for OSU Tourney, in my opinion, is not a good way of setting it up and it does not give very much info. So I'm going to spend the most time talking about the tournament.cfg. You have several fields that are relatively important on this. Uh, one of them that often goes unnoticed or not even talked about is custom frame limit. I would set that to 60. Typically, if you do not set custom frame limit to 60, the frames per second on all of your individual instances of OSU running through the tournament client will exceed 60 FPS, even if your monitor does not. And so you will be wasting processing power on displaying extra frames, which are not necessary. Yes, if you drop a frame here and there, because they're set to 60, the quality will go down a little bit. But in the interest of keeping your processing power down in general and making it so that your computer can properly run the tournament client, setting a custom frame limit of 60 in your tournament.cfg is well advised for people who are just getting into streaming and don't want to completely burn their PC. Team size can range anywhere from one to four. If it's a 1v1, it's team size one. If it's a 2v2, it's team size two, etc. Uh, height equals 720 probably should not be changed unless you have a 4K monitor. Uh, height equals 720 is the height of the Tourney Client Manager itself uh, and is only the height of the visible portion which is actually streamed. The control panel at the bottom does not count toward that height. So if you set height equal to 1080 and you have a normal 1920 by 1080p monitor, you are not going to be able to see the control panel at the bottom of the screen and you will lose all functionality of the tournament client, or at least a very large portion of the functionality of the tournament client. Uh, private server is self-explanatory. Client name size is not self-explanatory and people often don't know what to put for it. Uh, in my opinion, there are three correct choices for client name size, and they are dependent on the team size that you put in. For team size one, I think client name size 90 is very solid as a choice. Anywhere between 80 to 100 is pretty fine. Uh, for team size two, I think anywhere from 50 to 80 is pretty good there. Uh, I think that client name size equals 70 is pretty good for 2v2. That's my personal choice. And I think client name size equals 50 is the optimal choice for uh, team size 3 and 4. It keeps the player names low enough on the client that they are not obstructing a lot of the field of view, but large enough that you can still read them when you are actually watching the broadcast. 
Uh, I would not bother changing any of these. These are all just default values. There's no reason to change them. If you do, make sure your other streamers and commentators line up with them. Acronym is self-explanatory. If you change this, it changes uh, what the filter is on the tournament client for displayable lobbies. Um, the tournament client will display all lobbies, which all multiplayer lobbies, which are currently active and start with your acronym. Um, the the rest of this you do not need to mess with at all. There's no reason for you to. The things which I most often change here are acronym, client name size, and team size. The rest of it I'll leave the same. And that is what I'm going to do here. I'm actually going to delete the acronym as well. And so now if I open this up, It'll give me this message to be responsible with the usage of the tournament client and to only use it for tournament hosts and streamers. This is the default tourney client background. It's blue on the left and red on the right, even though with the cutting edge client, uh, the names displayed are red on the left and blue on the right. You may consider getting a custom background made because of that to avoid any confusion. And you can see every active multi-lobby is being displayed right now, and so the client is lagging out a little bit. But this is uh, pretty par for the course. If you choose to display every single multi-lobby like this, it's going to end up lagging a little bit. Uh, from here, you have uh, full access to the tournament client. You can change the best of to, for example, 13 and have seven stars pop up. Uh, toggle warm up will do that. Sync music will restart the music. And panic will restart each individual player client window. Kinda. It doesn't manually restart it like this, but it does something similar but less powerful. And that's my basic introduction to the tournament client. If you want to know more, there are plenty of other guides on streaming using the tournament client that are out there. This is a basic video on initial setup. Um, the only other thing that I would add is that if you do want to make any changes that show up when you, any cosmetic changes that show up when you load the tournament client, make sure they all happen in a skin titled user so that you are able to see all of the cosmetic changes. For example, on my Yaza Summer Cup tournament client, it shows up like this instead of with the default background because all of the things that I did to change, or that the graphic designer did to change the look of the tournament client, were then put into this skin folder in the user folder. If you have any questions, leave them as comments down below in this video, or you can direct message me on Twitter or Discord, and I will likely be able to answer you. I do not check my OSU DMs. Do not message me there. Uh, I will not see them for weeks at a time. Uh, if you actually watched this and got something out of it, thanks for watching, and I hope you are able to get some use out of this basic video.